we start, chaps, by talking about this quite incredible relegation situation. <sighs> Let's start by talking Everton. Sean Dyche coming to the city <clears throat> ground today. Everton in that bottom three, as you saw there. Mm. Did you expect a bigger impact from Sean Dyche when he got the job? Well, given, given the fixtures that he's had to deal with, um, probably not. I think two wins in five when you play Arsenal twice, difficult games in there, is OK. Two wins, of course, winning games with three points is, is huge. Um, maybe I expected that defensively, because they conceded six in the last two games, I think it is. I expect them to be a little tighter, given some... They've got some good players. You can see two of them right there, Cody and Tarkovsky there. Um, it's just... I mean, you look at their midfield, which we'll take a look at in the lineup soon. It, it, it looks like it's got some physicality, some some foundation about it. It's just the final piece, the attacking part, the final third. Again, we're getting little looks here of certain players that are going to be involved in that. That's where they struggle, Rebecca. The goals, creating goals, and we know that Sean Dyche's kind of philosophy sometimes makes that difficult because he's so focused on being defensively strong with that strong foundation. That's the balance he's got to find. Maybe midfield players, Anana here, maybe they can get into the box and score a few more goals. But when you lose Anthony Gordon, one of your best players in the January window and don't replace him, and you've got Neil Mope that's got one in 20, Dominic Cavalloon continues to have injury issues, that's their problem right there. Mm. What do you think, when you look at your old club, what do you think has been the root to their problem? Well, I think, I think it goes all the way back when Moshiri took over seven years ago. In that seven years, he's had eight managers. When you have eight managers, that's, they want their own players. They, they inherit players that they don't want, and they try and get out of the door. And then, ultimately, you get to Sean Dyche. And here we are, and he's inherited a bunch of players, probably been told he can't buy any. One of our best assets in, in Anthony Gordon, he's got to go. And so when, when, when you look at what he's, what he's adopted, it's just a mess. It's a mess from the last seven years. We saw this coming last year with Everton. And so, uh, as you said, the striking's been abysmal. They've had no goals really from anywhere. The top goal scorer has three goals. I like the midfield three of Onana, mm. Decore, Idrissa Ganagay. They're robust. They get about. But there is no production in that midfield. And, it's, it's hard to see where the goals are going to come from. They've scored two goals under Deitch in five games. Both have been from defenders. When that happens and you're on the training ground, and I've been there, the message is got to keep a clean sheet, got to keep a clean sheet. And as long as you can keep it at nil, first 20 minutes, 30 minutes, you feel great about yourself. The second that goal goes in, which it has been, now you know we have to find two goals when finding one has been nearly impossible. Mm. So have they been negligent, relying so heavily on Dominic Calvert-Lewin? Um... It looks that way now because he can't stay fit. And then even when he has been fit, the football hasn't suited him. He's only scored the one goal in 11 games this season. So, yes, but they had, a, they had enough around him when he was fit and they were playing Route 1 football that they were getting some results. They saw that at the back end of last season. OK, let's have another look at the bottom half because this is quite incredible, Robbie. As I say, from 27 points down to 21, separating 12th down to 20th. Now, this is, am I not correct? Because Brighton, Brentford and Fulham, you probably at the beginning of the season would have expected to have yeah. at least two of those three appeared somewhere in this bottom half. They are all in the top half and flying, which means that if you're not counting Bournemouth as a classic big club, two big clubs are going to get relegated. Yeah, and I look at the West Ham United and Leicester City, two teams that would not have expected expected to be in this area and then it's a whole different mindset of trying to get out of it and what needs to be done in those situ uh, situations. Uh, I think when I look at Nottingham Forest on 25 points there, a win, what a chance this game mm -hmm. is for them. To get mm -hmm. to 28 points, Rebecca, then what you can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I've been there in that relegation area. When you start getting towards 30 points, I mean, back then it was kind of 40. But nowadays, I think the average of the last 10 years to stay up to finish 17th mm. is like 37 and a half points. So that's the target. So if they can get to 28, beating another struggler, that's huge for Nottingham Forest. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.